Hello everyone, this is The Gnome, and I'd like to talk to you today about a subject close to my heart, and that's PC gaming, and why it's a colossal pain in the arse. The game you can see on screen is Anti-Chamber. It's a lovely little indie dev game, it's a first person puzzler. So it's very similar to kind of Paul, Paul 2 along those kind of things. You'll see I'm not very good at it, um, you'll see me running around the same um, sections over and over again as it's one for the brain and as everyone knows I'm not the smartest of uh, people. As you can see it's not the most uh, graphic intensive game ever and did it work when I downloaded it from Steam? No, of course not. It brought up an error every time that I tried to load it. Literally every time. I couldn't even get into the game or the loading screen Try to load up, it would come up with an error. And you know what else didn't work straight from the download? Magicka. As you can see Magicka now in the background while I do my standard spinning around move, that's something to do on every game. It's a cute little isometric spell em up and it's hardly a resource hog. I mean look at it, it's kind of sweet, it's got nice little kind of two and a half 3D effects. But this game brought an error every single time that I tried to load it. Every single time. My computer is pretty new. It was bought last September, last August kind of time. And it couldn't run this game. I mean, seriously, look at it. Um, we started doing I've also had problems with yeah, games yeah. such as Saints Row 3, Sleeping Dogs and XCOM. For those three games, just absolutely tanking the frames per second. And the reason? Updates. Bloody updates. I had to update my BIOS to sort out the frames issue with Saints Row and XCOM. And I had to download something called PhysX to run Magicka and Anti-Chamber. Seriously? Those games couldn't just simply work out of the box. Do you know what game did work out of the box? Planet Side 2. And this is the video you can see now. It's a first person MMO that's based over a huge continent across three factions and includes tank warfare, jet warfare and also ground soldiers. At this point, uh, I'm in somebody else's jet as a gunner and we're flying to the enemy bases to see what damage we can do. That's a friendly base, which I, if I jump down now, I can go and run into. That's also another friendly base, we're just crossing, and you'll see the size of it. You could go directly into that. You'll also notice there's no loading screens from where we are. We've just flown from one part of the map to another. And I'm now gonna bring the map up, so you can see kind of where we're flying to. So we started in the bottom left corner, didn't we leave it on there very long, and moved on. That's a player control jet flying about. And as you can see, the sheer scope and beauty of it absolutely dwarfs anything else. And now you'll see that I'm uh, away, sorry, under fire from an enemy controlled uh, vehicle. There's no AI in this game. Everyone you meet is another player playing somewhere in Europe or the United States, obviously, in America. And now I'm just going to launch from this height some heavy death. So you'll see some enemy vehicles jumping about, that plane jumping uh, out there. You see that base is taking some heavy fire as well. And I'm going to go drop some uh, bombs on it. So you'll see I've got a kill boom, from this heavy distance. And just the sheer scope, it sometimes takes a breath away. There, there's so many ways of playing this game. And this is one of them, it's probably one of the better ones, where you just get a hangout up here and just rain death. But what you can also do is, if it doesn't go very well, is get your boots on and go involve yourself on a one-to-one -one kind of basis. So you'll have a look at the base there. What we're now going to do is jump from this video to another video that I recorded where I was actually attacking, defending this base, sorry, um, on foot rather than from the sky. So this time I spawned as a soldier in the base that we were literally just hovering over. You'll see some recognisable features and I'm now going to engage them as an individual soldier. And it just baffles me that this works out of the box 
but Machika 92 got the run. And that's kind of the big pain in the arse, the big thing why people are kind of against PC gaming. Because yes, it's great having all the new fancy technology, but there is a simplicity that is nice of just going, I'm going to put this disc in, and it's going to work every single time without me having to fiddle about. Because if you mess the BIOS up, then you could severely damage your computer, and nobody wants to do multiple formats. I'm sure people on the, PC, um, on the PlayStation Xbox gaming have never had to format anything, and good luck to them. So now I'm going to show you a final bit of video for my conclusion. So my conclusion, PC gaming is mint. We get mint games, we get mint graphics, but having to update things is a colossal, as I said at the beginning, pain in the arse. And if that's the price we have to pay, then unfortunately it's not too bad. It'd be nice if everything worked perfectly out of the box, but there's a lot of different developers, there's a lot of different kit that you could have in there, so I can see why that's perhaps a pipe dream. But it's 2013, why can't we just have everything working correctly, straight from the off? So I'm going to leave you with a bit more plan side footage, because I think I got some kills. So thank you much everyone, Good night, and cheers. Tango Mike. <laughs>